Hello everyone, uh, my name is Viral Oza. I'm a gastroenterologist and an interventional endoscopist at Prisma Health in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. And today we're going to talk about colon polyps and its role in development of colon cancer. So one of the most common questions I get asked is what are colon polyps? So colon polyps are growths in the colon or the large intestine that occur over time. Now, most colon polyps uh, occur after the age of 45 to 50, and we are seeing younger and younger patients that have these growths called colon polyps. Colon polyps left in the intestine and not removed can turn into colon cancer. You know, our body is involved in making subtle microscopic uh, molecular level repairs on a second to second basis. And there's, there's mechanisms in place which prevent a normal cell from continuing to divide or continuing to repair itself. And when you have a mutation in one of these genes where the checkpoints are no longer functioning effectively, meaning it tells a cell that, hey, you gotta stop dividing now. When that, that mechanism becomes haywire, the cell continues to divide. And when it continues to divide, it can lead to these growths called colon polyps leave them in there, it can turn into a cancer. That progression from polyp to, to cancer or a malignancy oftentimes can be anywhere from seven to 10 years long. Now, if you have a genetic predisposition to having colon cancer, that, 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 that speed can be a lot faster. Colon polyps have no symptom. There is no symptom of having a polyp, which is why doing a colonoscopy or screening for colon cancer becomes important particularly after you hit the age of 45. Now, in some patients, like I alluded earlier, if you have a genetic predisposition, then you might have to get the colonoscopy or colon cancer screening done sooner. How many colon polyps will actually turn into cancer? And that really depends on the type of polyp you have. There's multiple different types of colon polyps. The most common one that we see in a colonoscopy is something called adenoma. Adenoma literally translates to a benign growth. But in this case, a growth that can lead to cancer. The percentages of how many patients with colon polyps actually develop colon cancer, that percentage number as a whole is not very high. However, just from looking at a adenoma, there's no way for us to predict that this particular adenomatous polyp will turn into cancer and another adenomatous polyp will not. So when we see a polyp, our rule of thumb is we take all the polyps out because we cannot differentiate effectively just from looking at it that this is going to be cancer, this is going to turn into cancer and this is not. Once we find these adenomas or colon polyps, we tend to remove them. But how long the process is, one of my patients ask me all the time that, hey doc, how long does it take for this polyp that you just found? Or what if I left it in there and didn't get a colonoscopy? When would it be a cancer? On the flip side, I often get patients that I diagnose colon cancer in, unfortunately. And then they ask me, how long have I had that? And my answer to them is, it could be about eight to 10 years because a polyp, its progression unchecked over eight to 10 years will lead to cancer. How do we remove them? We actually have tools that go through our camera scope where we are able to remove small growths using either a uh, little forceps uh, or we can use a little snare that kind of goes around the polyp and just cuts, shaves it off from the, from the base of the surface of the colon. And we can take them out that way. Another way to take colon polyps out is if depending on its size, we might, be, we might have to lift them off the surface, kind of making it a little bit of a mushroomous, mushroom type of growth so that it's safe for us to cut it. We sometimes use something called electrocautery or, or essentially heat energy to cut through these polyps. Nowadays, there's actually new technology that allows us to remove polyps uh, that are really large in size in a very safe manner without necessitating surgery. If the polyp is very, very large and not conducive to removal with an endoscopy, with a, colonos with a colonoscopy, then in those cases, we would refer the patients to a surgeon who would then have to do a small surgery to remove, remove this polyp surgically. But by and large, majority of the polyps, over 90 to 95% of polyps that we find are removable by colonoscopy. So once a polyp is removed, how long does it take for the polyp to come back? 
And now that is a question that depends on a number of different factors. One is genetics of, uh, of an individual. The second factor that goes into play is was the polyp removed entirely or was anything left behind? And we have things that we do at our end when we're doing the procedure to make sure that everything is completely gone. And depending on the size of the polyp and how it was removed, you may need a repeat colonoscopy in six months, for example, or three months to make sure it hasn't regrown at the same spot. Majority of the times, again, that does not happen. Uh, polyps, once removed safely and completely removed, they do not tend to grow back. Uh, they, you might have another polyp in another location in the intestine, but not at the same spot. Because once that's gone, uh, it's generally gone. But like I said, if it, if it wasn't removed entirely, or even a microscopic amount was left behind, then in those cases that can regrow in the same spot. Uh, and that is why sometimes your physician may ask you, hey, you have to come back in three to six months for what we call a surveillance colonoscopy to make sure that it hasn't regrown in the same spot. Colon polyps may not be entirely preventable. However, things that we can do to make sure our risk of developing polyps remains as low as possible is we can have a healthy lifestyle, avoid smoking and using tobacco, have uh, exercise regularly. Uh, we cannot change the genetics, meaning if we are born in a, with certain genes, that we cannot change, but we can certainly do uh, things which uh, allow us to reduce that risk. I hope this information was uh, infor informative to you and helpful. Please encourage your friends and family members to get their screening colonoscopies at age 45. And if we can help here at Prisma Health, please uh, do not uh, hesitate to contact us.